It's your boy, Keith Bontrager. Just kidding. It's me, John. Speaking of Keith Bontrager, I wanted to talk today about what a fucking genius he is and how oftentimes he's overlooked because Trek has just put out so much bullshit with his name stuck to it. Um, I mean, I understand. I get it. Like, one, I bet it came with a really big paycheck. Um, two, they sort of they, they retained him. He's got a job for life, and he gets to write his own check. He's in uh, R&D. He gets to design new, freaky, cool shit. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a respectable position. I'm not taking anything away from Keith by what I'm about to say. But it, it's a little sad to me, you know? I'm on the other end. I'm just a poor fucker who builds stuff, and I work on bikes, and I see stuff that needs improving, and I just do my best to, to improve it. Um, at a certain point, you know, Keith was a tinkerer also, and he was also the underdog, and he really revolutionized uh, mountain biking. You know, he's one of the forefathers. So, a uh, little history. Uh, Keith was into motorcycles. Um, when he was a kid, he would take stuff apart, put it back together. He was actually a bit like myself, just an endless tinkerer. Um, got really into motorsports. The story goes that he saw one too many road rash crashes where dudes got turned into fucking hamburger and decided to go a little bit slower to get into pedal-powered two wheels. So, um, you know, he looked around and he saw the prices of imported bikes. And, you know, a bike that you would want to ride, a nice Italian bike. Um, who knows what he was into, but he said, you know, screw that. I'm going to make my own. So he did. And he became a frame builder of some renown and got into mountain biking at a certain point and started building those. Um, right away, he started to notice the problems that were uh, inherent in early mountain biking. They were using 26 inch wheels that and tires from basically like balloon tire stuff and cruisers. Uh, there wasn't very much durable, lightweight components um, and the frames had much to be desired. So he started building mountain frames. Uh, he developed testing methods. He's, he had some of the first, if not the first, TIG welded bicycles. Um, and he developed gussets. He developed all of these things that we now take for granted. Um, compact geometry, so sort of like the main triangle being uh, reduced in size for standover clearance. Um, that was a Keith Von Trager thing. So that's neither here nor there. There were lots of people on the front lines of mountain bikes. And again, I'm not a huge mountain biker. I, I think that the technology is really interesting, and it's a purely American uh, innovation. So my favorite, favorite moment um, in any bicycle epoch is when enthusiasts are making shit in their own homes, right? So nowadays, you know, you want a BMX bike, you want a mountain bike, you want a road bike. You pretty much buy either sort of bespoke stuff that's really, really fancy pants, or you go into a bike shop and buy some off-the-shelf sh shit. Um, but in the very beginning of any sport, of any subsection of bicycling or skiing or backpacking or anything else, I'm sure, you have these freaks, these enthusiasts, who are taking what currently exists and modifying it to fit their needs, making it lighter, making it stronger, coming up with new designs. They are, they're pushing the sport beyond what a big company could, could uh, push it to. Um, and they're nimble, you know, they can, they can change directions at a moment's notice if something's not working. So, you know, I wanted to just do a quick video on something that I find to be one of the most beautiful things that I think I've ever seen. This wheel here, or rather, this wheel set, is a Keith Von Trager built rim wheel set. So. You may notice, can I get the angle correct? This is a Mavic road rim. This, this was, this started life as a 700C rim, uh, probably for a touring bike or a tandem. And I don't know how it struck him. You know, it must have been a eureka moment at some point in his day. He was probably thinking about how insufficiently strong and overbuilt and heavy and wide, um, the kind of 26 inch rims that you could get at the time were. And maybe did a little back of the napkin number crunching and figured out, 
shit. If I start with a 40 hole rim, 700C 40 hole rim, and then I separate it at the seam, cut it down, and roll it out again so it's round, I can make myself a perfectly reasonable, strong, light, durable, 26 inch uh, mountain rim. And so he did that. The goddamn dude dumpster dived for discarded 700C rims. At least that's how the story goes. I bet he bought quite a few of them as well once the order started rolling in. Figured out the math, figured out what he would need to start with to end up here, and cut, rolled, reduced, and then put back together Mavic road rims into the first lightweight Mavic mountain bike rims. Um, maybe I'm a nerd. Maybe that's more, <laughs> much less exciting to people uh, who, who aren't uh, such huge nerds as I am. But this is the only exciting thing for me about bikes. I commute. I fucking, I'm not like a huge cyclist. I don't have a car because I'm a loser. So uh, I mean, it's not like a choice. It's not like a, like, oh yeah, I have a car and all this money and, and so I choose to ride a bike because I'm really into being fit and strong. No, it's it's that I've ridden bikes my whole life and I'm good at it and I default to that. But what excites me about this are the other super nerds. Taking something that doesn't exist or that does exist already and molding it to fit their needs. Um, I think it was Kirk Pacenti is another great example of this. So, you know, now everyone has 650B bikes, 27.5 mountain bikes. Um, some of the very, very first ones, and, you know, tell me in the comments if it wasn't Kirk Pacenti, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure it was him. He was taking 29er tires, cutting them, joining them back together with, with thread and a needle. He was sewing tires together in that smaller size. Um, he would have... Uh, White Brothers, not White Industries, but the fork manufacturer, make him custom 27.5 forks, and since he was a frame builder, he could just build uh, the rest of the platform. This is the stuff that's uh, so very exciting to me. And you can still do that today, you know? Don't grumble, don't complain about it. Even if it's crude when you first start, even if it's not pretty, even if it, if it looks like a piece of trash, like everything I make, um, if you see a need in your sport, if you see something that could use some fixing, well, experiment with it. Take the time, build yourself one, test it. If it's good enough, it'll catch on and it will be a total paradigm shift. Mountain bikes, huge. Suspension, huge. That A lot of the early suspension designs were just, you know, some crazy idea like, uh, <laughs> you know, spun up in someone's uh, back room um, who maybe worked in aerospace. Um, all of these things are within your reach, <laughs> honestly. Um, there's stuff that I am doing, which I'm not going to announce yet, but even if it's a flop, you did something. You didn't stare at your phone, you know what I mean? You didn't visit Pornhub 26 times and read uh, a Reddit thread about something you already believe in. You did a little bit of research, you saw an opening, in a field that is already saturated and you went for it so all you have to risk is fucking failure um which keith did he risked failure and he won out big time um i think of of all of the guys and gals who have over the years changed the face of of, of things and oftentimes it just takes takes one good idea to completely completely undermine the old paradigm I'm a bit rambly because I've had like 19 cups of coffee and I'm still tired for some reason. But uh, yeah, mull that over. Think about it. Meditate on it. Cutting 700C rims down to 26 inch and having it work and be stronger than a factory made 26 inch rim. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the Japanese ass masters bite.